Hello. No, I just wanted to welcome you for the session, sir, and thank you so much for uh, accepting our invitation and do it. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Can, please can, please can, go ahead. Sir. Yes. Please. Okay, okay ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, sir, my screen is uh, visible, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. You can start the session. Okay, sir. Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, today we are going to see about the overview of construction and uh, project management. Uh, first of all, you want to know me what is mean by project management. Okay. So in project management, there is two words. One is project, and other one is management. Okay. So first of all, you want to know what is mean by project and what is mean by management. So project is nothing but is a task, okay, or a group of activity. Is a management means is nothing but is a operating key tool for achieving that task. Uh, being a civil engineer, our uh, main project is constructing a building, okay. So that is our project. Every project have starting time and the end time. While constructing a building, uh, we say so it's a G plus one building. It's a ground floor plus one building. Okay, the customer, the owner asks, sir, uh, how much days it will take? Uh, we say sir, nearly duration should be six months. So we know the starting time and the ending time. So that is the project. Okay, so project is a task. What is the management means? So we are going to construct a house. Okay, in the, in construction, we need man sources, then cost wise, then tools and the other resources. So everything should be done. Okay, so the management is nothing but consists of five elements, mainly planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. So these are the operation key to achieve that task. Okay, so this is the uh, main definition of project and also its management. Uh, you are well aware of the project management. Okay, so here the application of knowledge. Okay, we are applying our knowledge, skills, then tools and technique. Why we are applying to satisfy the stakeholders' expectation. Okay, so this is the definition of project management. Project management is nothing but is we are going to apply our knowledge, skills, tools and techniques to satisfy the stakeholders' expectation. It actually starts with the evaluating. Then we are designing the product. Then we developing the product according to the market demand. Then we are analyzing whether uh, we will sustain the product in the market or uh, we will uh, we are in the decline point. That should be analyzed here. So these are the various stages of project. Okay, when starting a new thing, we are must be first what we are doing, we must think. Okay, for example, we are going to purchase your mobile. Okay. A uh, lot of brands are not here. Okay, a lot of brands are here. So first you want to think, okay, what is our need? So that is the thinking. Next planning. Okay, our budget is nearly 10,000 rupees. So we have to plan. So next is plan. Then data collection. Okay, if we are going to purchase a 10,000 mobile, 10,000 rupees mobile, what are the data are available? Okay, it's 2 MP megapixel. Like that you should collect the data then the data should be implemented into the market okay if, if if it is a successful we are in the increasing path otherwise we are should be in the decreasing path so this is the various stages of project okay we are now we are studying the project management first of all we want to know why project management is necessary okay first of all in today's world we are uh, normally see resources and times are becoming more and more complex okay every time we are going for uh, money and also where we are and we are uh, working for uh, money and also so many hours when compared to the olden days okay so first question is why project management is important first is accountability that is responsibility 
okay every person should have responsibility next one you should while responsibility automatically your organization will improve so second point is improve organization then you want to control the main aspect is you want to satisfy the customers okay then reducing the time then reducing the wastage then the work should be in the moral okay uh, then you want to identification the problems the main aim of the project management is identification problem and it should be quickly corrected if it is quickly corrected means automatically our time should be saved and also cost also savings so this is the main thing we are studying in the project management so these are the three main constraints actually i have viewed your syllabus your syllabus should depends upon these three things time uh, cost and this quality okay so time means uh, uh, you are uh, in the first unit you are studying the gan chart and then bar chart then per that sandal is comes under the category time cost is nothing but cost budgeting is i think it's in the second unit or third unit you are studying that then quality is quality is nothing but the feasibility and the commissioning okay i think you are studying in the fifth unit okay so these are the three main constraints of project management so every project management should under comes under this five category first is initiating then planning then executing then monitoring and controlling then closing these are the five main elements of project management so this is the project life cycle we are all, we already see that uh, initiating initiating means is defining you want to define the your goal what is your aim that should be comes under the category defining then planning the planning should be your budget under the time at what time you want to complete the uh, work that should be a schedule then resources what are the resources needed for that then what are the main resources you are that is staffing okay it's all comes under the category of planning then executing so this planning should executing by means of uh, in the quality and forecast okay if any deviation in the quality or forecast the report that the status report is noted stage by stage okay if any deviation it should be corrected next is delivering delivering means all this all the things it could be comes under the documents okay so by documents we can came to know which part we are undergone mistakes so this is the main project life cycle we are following so first is initiating so initiating means is a starting up of a new project i already say we have a lot of uh, brands mobile brands so first we want to uh, choose which one is we are we are going to buy second one is planning it is a planning is a important art okay it is the most important in the project management okay so here here only in planning only you are going to take your best course of action because we are while planning we have uh, many options okay so in many options we have to select one selective course of action that action should comes into realization okay so i am thinking okay i am going to purchase a uh, uh, samsung mobile so a lot of brands are here so what i thinking okay so a so lot of a uh, lot of things are there so i am taking the selective brand okay samsung is best one okay so that should be comes under the category of planning next one is executing executing is executing the work as per the schedule okay so in this process execution i am going to buy a new mobile to the uh, mobile shop next one controlling so it is the main part in the project management okay any deviation as per schedule because in planning we are scheduling uh part by part okay if any deviations happens in the scheduling it automatically we are not controlling means it's automatically your project in lackness okay then you want to face losses okay so it is the main part in the project management next one is closing so it is the final part so normally uh, in construction field we are facing this uh, closing problem we should not satisfy the customer needs so that should be a conflict between the customers and also the engineers so it is the main important part so 95 percentage of uh, engineers are facing this problem 
okay so these are the five main uh, elements or in the project management so initiating planning executing controlling and closing okay uh, being a civil engineer we are how to frame this project management plan okay first of all uh, as an engineer we want to plan so how to frame that framework okay so first one is what is our objective okay our objective is we are going to build a house okay then how much second is how much time we need for it then how much cost we need for it okay if any deviation for a, for example if it if it is a climatic change uh, or some environmental change or some seismic effect okay some deviation happened means what we are going to do okay then what are the resources needed for that uh, we need a met, men's resources material resources like that then communications so these are all the main things which comes under management plan okay every engineer should know this framework then only he can execute successfully the project so next one is uh, is a knowledge area uh, first of all the scope is nothing but is objective objective means to say aim okay uh, you should what is your objective then uh, then time then what is the cost then what is the quality then communication then what are the risk you are going to face there then procurement and hr that is much staffing that is you are uh, going to select uh, uh, members then stakeholders stakeholders is nothing but customers so this should be integrated okay for what to achieve a goal in the organization so this is the knowledge area you are focusing for project management so already i say the three constraints are the that is uh, time cost and quality so time okay so the time should be calculated by means of this project planning techniques uh, normally it should be calculated by bar chart so i think you are uh, visible with the diagram so just concentrate on the diagram see there are uh, so many bars are found there so uh, every gan chart should be represented by horizontal line okay so that is the first main important point the length of the line indicates the duration of activity okay. see for, uh, for a uh, it comes from 1 to 4 for b it's going for 5 to 10 so it's nearly increased by 6 so the uh, weak number should be increased by 6 so that that activity b activity is increased by 6 uh, normally the time and activity should be represented here from left to right and from top to bottom this is the main key point okay so normally the bar chart is uh, can be represented by horizontal line then the length of the line should indicate the duration of activity is normally denoted to left to right and top to bottom okay this is the bar chart and its uh, main advantages of bar chart is the main advantages of bar chart is is a graphical representation anyone can understand this graphical representation okay so main disadvantages is there is no clear indication in progress okay that is the starting point and the ending point there is no should be there should be no clear identification okay so that is the main advantages we are facing in the bar chart okay next topic is uh, work or breakdown structure actually what is the meaning for work breakdown structure means uh, here the task is divided into number of tasks okay Yeah. For example, if you are going to purchase a, I already say you are going to purchase a mobile. Actually, the mobile consists of a number of components. Uh, that is a motherboard, then batteries, then display, uh, then outer frame. Okay. So this and all comes under different task. Okay. Your main structure is cell phone. That is mobile. okay so that structure should be divided into number of tasks so by combining this task by combining this task you will get the structure so that is the breakdown of structure so the main task should be subdivided into many categories many number of tasks so that is called as work ground or breakdown structure okay next one is network techniques so uh, uh, before we have see that uh, a uh, bar chart is a project planning te techniques uh, next network technique is nothing but cpm and uh, perth 
i think you are well aware of this so network techniques is related with both cpm and perth okay cpm is nothing but critical path method and uh, perth is a program evaluation review technique okay so it is a activity oriented system then perth is a event oriented system okay here's uh, cpm that is a critical path method so every critical path method have starting time and also it's a finishing time okay the main disadvantage is it will take longest time to complete the process so it is the main disadvantage so that's why many of them going for the perth okay it was founded by du pont okay uh, the main uh, comparison is the cost of project versus time in the critical path method okay so the, here there are some steps which are given first you want to specify the individual activity so that activity should be sequence as per the order then you want to draw the network diagram for the network diagram you want to estimate okay which one is best critical path so that should be updated in the cpm diagram uh, so here the arrow indicates its activity then circle indicates even okay so dummies we have no value so that should be taken as zero uh, then total float you are know that here is start time minus our start time you are all well aware of this basic terms so i give you some uh, simple example for cpm so at the initial point a the value should be 0 0 then it should be moved to the other point uh, b so the starting point of that event is 0 so the ending point that is the duration between a to b is 8 so 0 comma 8 next the b to the event d okay so now the starting point is 8 and the ending point c we are the duration between the b and d is 13 so 8 plus 13 is 21 okay so i am mentioning there as 8 21 okay so this why this why we want to calculate and find out which network is uh, good for the critical path next one is perth so that i already said that it's a program evaluation revenue technique Uh, it was developed by us navy okay it is uh, actually the project uh, this first should be used in the short time projects so that's why many of them are using this perth method okay so here also some st steps are followed first we want to identify the specific then the same aspect we want to properly sequence then we want to draw the network then as per same uh, like we want to find the estimate time then we want to find the critical path then we want to update the perth chart so mainly the perth calculation should comes under this formula t not plus 4 tm plus t sub x p divided by 6 so here t not is a minimum possible time to complete a task tm is the best estimated time required to complete a task tp is a maximum possible time to complete a task so within these variables we are framing the formula t t sub x not plus 4 t sub x m plus t sub x p divided by 6 so a uh, small example i have given for initial de uh, design the optimum value is 12 then most likely time is 16 then pessimistic value is 26 so t not value should be 12 t sub x m value should be 16 then t sub x value should be 26 so we know the formula t not plus 4 t m plus 4 plus t p divided by 6 while applying this value in the formula you will get the answer 17 okay so uh, by this method you want to find all this value so after finding this value uh, you just mark it here so first one a 17 uh, next value b is 10 then e value should be 5 f is 8 uh, then uh, g should be 20 c value should be 11 d is 3 here we are finding which is a critical path i am choosing first a b e f g that is straight path uh, by adding this value i am getting 60 next i am choosing another path that is a c e f g i am getting 64 so the value which is higher is a critical path see i am getting the value as 64 so i have taken this as a 64 as a critical path okay just the main difference between the critical path and uh, 
program evaluation is cpm and perth method is first it is a activity oriented perth is event oriented it is a deterministic model it is a probabilistic model so what is mean by determinist we are well aware about the probability okay uh, what is determinist means what actually determinist mean there is no random in probabilistic we are what we are doing we are taking some samples a b and c that and uh, we are sampling there but here there is no sampling okay directly we are going to approach and that is uh, that should not be extend for the future okay so here no predetermined means there is no probability here the probability means we can choose any sample okay it is a single time estimate cpm here three time three time means we are know that the t not tm then tp so this is a three time estimate cpm is used for the repeated work in building construction but perth is not used for the repetitive work okay uh, cpm can control both time and the cost but perth is a basic tool for planning that's why they are most of them starting perth method okay so first i, I think we are uh, completed with the first constraint time Okay, so next one is cost management. Okay. Cost management. So first is what is mean by cost management? Cost management is nothing but planning and controlling the budget. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, we are, we are going to construct a building, so we need twelve uh, lakhs. Okay, for uh, for approximately we need twelve lakhs, so that should be a planning. Okay, controlling controlling means okay whether we will give the a uh, total building to a contractors or uh, we will purchase them so that all should be scheduled in the uh, planning and controlling the budget okay uh, so next one is the main aim is to predict the expenditures i already say okay whether we will purchase the material or we will we will hand over all the things to the engineer if we if we purchase the material means uh, the expenditure is little bit low and compared to the uh, engineers okay so that prediction should be calculated in the cost management next one is this principle what is the main principle is cash flow analysis okay the cash flow analysis means estimator is nothing but estimated project cost and the benefit of project organization uh, nothing but uh, we are estimating the cost is 12 lakhs okay but uh, we we complete the work we complete this task in uh, 11 lakhs means we have benefited nearly 1 lakh so the cash flow should be calculated at every step okay whether we will be a benefiter or loss second one is tangible tangible cost and intangible cost tangible cost means you can measure uh, measurements for giving for providing a salary to an engineer or uh, providing salary to the workers that should be measurable okay intangible means monetary cost okay the monetary cost means what is a expensive cost you are spending the money to receive the goods okay so that is the monetary cost we are spending the amount for that product that is called as intangible cost okay next one is direct cost and indirect cost i already say the direct cost is uh, salary then indirect cost is like the electricity telephone bills it should be vary okay it's not be constant uh, one uh, for a month it will comes near uh, our telephone bills comes nearly 800 rupees for next month it goes for 1200 like that it should be vary okay what does includes the cost management okay what the cost management should include it includes budget then benefit then spending expensive funding then roi the roi means return on investment we are investing the amount uh, then we will get the return that means profit that is roi roi means return on invest okay next how it is done in project first one is cost management plan i think you will aware of this work cost management plan okay it's nothing but outline of project estimation okay i already said i am going to construct a house for 12 lakhs so that is the outline of my project estimation that is the cost management plan next cost baseline cost baseline is nothing but time phase budget okay uh, for example we are uh, we are going to construct a house for 12 lakhs Uh, after six months, the material rate will be increases. Automatically, what happens? Our estimation will increase. So that is the cost baseline is nothing but time based budget used to measure control all the performance on the project. That is the cost baseline. 
Next one is activative cost estimator. Activative cost estimator means, for example, uh, for foundation, we, uh, foundation, uh, we invested uh, nearly three lakhs rupees as, as per our schedule. Okay, by verifying uh, the amount should be nearly two lakhs fifty thousand after its work is completed. Okay, here. So for every activity, we want to check whether it is a loss or its profit as per our schedule, as per our before starting our work. Our estimation is three lakhs. Okay. After completing the task, that is after completing the work, the amount is nothing but two lakhs fifty thousand. So we are earning the amount fifty thousand. So every activity we want to check. Next one is fourth one is performance measurement. That is comparing the outcome result with the plan result. I already said that the three lakhs and two lakhs. We are just comparing the result. So these are the main things we have to follow. In the, we are following the cost budget. So cost budgeting should be estimate cost, then determining budget, and also is controlling the cost. Okay. Next one is determining the budget. Okay. Next one is determining the budget. First one is cost aggregation. Aggregation means we are all know well aware of that word sum. Okay, it's a total. As per our English word, it's a total. So total cost from the word itself, you know, you came to know the meaning. Okay, so total cost. What for? What we are going for total cost? The total cost involved in the manufacturing a product or service or any other buildings. Okay, you want to calculate the total cost. That is called as cost aggregation. Okay, next one is reserve analysis. Reserve analysis from the term itself, no, it is an analytical technique. Okay, it is an analytical technique to determine. Duration and also cost of a project. First one is we are just totaling the cost of a project. Second one is by by we are moving to a analytical method just to calculate the duration and cost of a project. Third one is historical data, just is collection of data from the past events. Okay, history means the past events. Next fourth one is funding limit reconciliation. That is we are just to identify any variance in the planned expenditure. Uh, that is that means uh, what I say. Okay, we are seeing the mobile. We are going to purchase a mobile, and we are just seeing in the Flipkart or in Amazon. Uh, it's like uh, twelve thousand rupees. When we are going to the store, they saying, "Sir, uh, your uh, mobile cost to be fourteen thousand rupees." We are, we will argue, sir. No, uh, in Flipkart or Amazon, we have found that it's a twelve thousand rupees. Now you are telling us fourteen thousand. So that that should be that variance should be calculated in the funding limit. Reconciliation. So that is the term funding limit reconciliation. Next one is uh, earned value analysis. Okay, the earned value analysis means what is the meaning for that means it is a method to evaluating the project performance. Okay, it is a method to evaluate the project performance on which basis means cost and schedule. Okay, so by calculating the cost and the schedule. So this method is adopted. Okay, there should be three terms: planned value, earned value, then actual value. By these three terms, they will calculate the earned value analysis. Okay, for planned value means okay, how much cost you are spending for the work. That is the total cost spending for the work. Earned value is we are going to estimate the cost for the work completed. Okay, third one, actual value means total direct plus indirect cost for the work. So these are the three terms which is used to calculate the earned value analysis. Wow. Next topic is cost budgeting. It's the most important topic. Uh, the main usage of cost budgeting is estimating for individual work and major work. So every aspect, every activity, we want to calculate the cost. Okay. From that cost, we will find out whether we are in the declined part or increasing part. I already said that we are, for example, foundation. Uh, the our our individual activity of foundation is three lakhs rupees as per our schedule. But while working, it comes under nearly two two lakhs fifty thousand. So fifty thousand is profit. So that is the cost budgeting. The first one is we want to estimate the value. The second one is funding requirement. Okay, after completion of foundation, we are going for the next stage. We need we need nearly five lakhs to be so. The second one is funding requirement. Third one is monitoring and control. So it is an important aspect because without monitoring and control, 
the work should be always going in the decline path okay so as a civil engineer we should monitor and control the cost thus then only we will get profit in our work so this is the three main aspects in the cost budgeting okay we are doing sir uh, you are saying that time also one constraint then other uh, cost also one constraint so what is the benefit here means it's nothing but the project should be completed within the specified time so that is the main important point because if the project is extended means uh, for example we are completing the task at 6 months then the work will not completed within the 6 month it will goes for the again one month means again as extended a month means what happen your time also waste cost also raise your materials waste your resources is totally the work should be unprofitable okay so the every work should be completed in a proper time and also in a budget okay then second one we will know the accuracy cost estimate while doing this cost budgeting we will know the cost estimate third one is return on investment okay we are investing uh, 12 lakhs rupees okay after completing all the tasks we are just verifying the uh, estimation okay we found that uh, okay we will get 25000 or 50000 as a profit so this things will comes under only by cost budgeting okay that's why i already say the project management is very important for civil engineer due to this time time and it's also cost constraints so next one is uh, i think next uh, i have found in your uh, syllabus like uh, project management software okay so how it will help for us sir actually the project management software helps in what main means as as like planning resource management then project cost control then automating communication then visibility in project progress uh, these four words you are already know that that is planning resource management cost control then visibility in project progress automatic communication is what is the meaning for that is it is nothing but data management system all the data are stored in the uh, system okay it help us to solving the problems and also reduce the error uh, as per schedule uh, they will check whether uh, we are going in a correct path or we are in the uh, any deviation path if any deviation means it's automatically it is it will be indicated due to how much it is due to by the database system so here also the uh, three main constraint and that's time cost and also is quality okay next one is software project management activity how this activity help for us okay the software activity help in many ways like planning then uh, designing of software products then estimation of cost then scheduling the task then resourcing the management not not only that it also includes project planning scope management then project estimate okay next topic is project planning we are already up to now we have seen the manual planning here the project planning how it start actually uh, this project planning start before while purchasing the software because in, uh, we are all know that in uh, small projects we are using ms excel okay for large project they are using the prime vera softwares okay so based on the decision okay for example i am going to construct a house for a uh, 15 lakhs means it is a small project so i can go for excel ms excel software if we are going for it, the same uh, engineer to go for a 50 lakhs or more than 1 lakh project sorry 1 uh, 1 crore project <coughs> sorry 1 crore project so he he should go for the prime vera so this project planning will start before the production of software starts okay after the planning only we will decide we will go for a, a excel or a prime vera okay so that is the project planning next project estimation so project estimation should be based on the software size estimation i already say that uh, when when we are going for a small project we can purchase uh, ms excel we are going for the large project means we are going for the uh, prime vera so it's based on the size estimation then effort then time and its cost okay normally this software comes under uh, one coding word that is k l o c okay normally this software uh, will uh, integrated the integrated the output as k l o c that is k means kilo k i l o l means line l i n e o means of code kilo line of code 
it is nothing but number of vertical lines when you are going for any markets or you are going to purchase your biscuit means you are finding some uh, uh, barcodes uh, back side of the packet okay that is nothing but inputting your database into the system okay that coding represent uh, when it is packed and how much it cost okay but while clicking the sensor on that uh, coding automatically the value of the product should be displayed in the monitor so that should be kloc kilo line of code okay so next is cost estimation okay the cost estimation is uh, for us from the software side we want to find okay whether the size of the software it is a medium or small or large okay uh, if you are the small means we are go for the excel if it is a large project means we will go for the prime prime era so okay the cost wise also increasing then quality then skill person should need us for this cost estimation because uh, we can't able to do that we want to learn the uh, any softwares okay then hardware then any supporting tools need for this software then we should need a training trainer for supporting this software so by calculating these things we have to prepare the cost estimation okay okay next for example i have done uh, how prime vera will help us okay prime vera help us for budgeting lab uh, labor cost then earned value report cost variance then total project costing okay this uh, data will give how much cost this building how much cost of the building okay how much labors are what for that labors how much amount we will spend okay for every activities we have calculated some amount And that should be comes under the budget cost variation if any task any deviation should be there it should be mentioned in the cost variance okay uh, see how does primera help the same concept is cost accounts project expense managing the currency budget summary and funding details so by using this primera we will know that uh, how much cost of the building then what are the expenses we have done on this building again uh, another one more software i have found in your uh, syllabus is uh, introduction to beam okay so beam is nothing but a building informative monitoring system okay so this is used why uh, what is the main important for beam is we are using for drawing and uh, building views that is the top view section views then we are calculating of materials okay for example 1 meter cube we need 500 brick, uh, bricks so that should be calculated the material should be calculated by using this beam concept and also quantity how much quantity required for example uh, nearly 10 meter cube means of brick means is automatically 5500 bricks are needed for this uh, project this should be this all all it comes under and it is calculated in this concept okay what is the benefit okay is a rich visualization okay the 3d if you are going to uh, just we are you going to show this to the customer means if the building in the 3d view means he can easily convince okay so it's a rich visualization second one is a quality calculation okay third one is detection of collision that is means where we are detecting where we are in the uh, that is wrong design okay uh, we are where, where where it is detected okay that collision should be shown here then the structural con connection that is defects in the structural connections uh, for example we want to uh, build a beam for 9 inches by 1 inches okay we are constructed 9 inches by 9 inches so the load acting on that beam which undergoes failure that should be indicated here okay so these are the benefits of beam so easily it shows the drawbacks or uh, defects in the structural elements and also the collision of building so what is the drawback means actually while studying 2d we are converting 3d means we need a very skilled training person to convert 2d into 3d otherwise it's a very difficult one to learn so this is the main drawback if we learn 3d means it's well and good okay we have a very great future but it is a little bit difficult so this is some of the example i have done it uh, by means of beam we can focus on drawing part drawing part like a, a floor part section views then elevation views and also you can show the model representation that is converting the 2d into 3d next one non graphical information non graphical information means the quantity calculation 
uh, you can calculate the uh, quantity number of bricks then how much cement contents required for the rcc building that should be calculated in the quantity calculation and also cost how much cost for this uh, activity every for every activity how much cost it will cost that's the null which comes under the non graphical information okay, these files are uh, normally we have uh, stored our file into uh, for example it is uh, autocad means we are just storing the dwg file but here ifc file then uh, dfx file pdf file then xml file this of uh, this file format we can store the bim then we can analysis i already stated that uh, some direction in the collision you okay, can see that uh, red color indicate jet stream from the navy works it shows some uh, red color so that part should be a defective part so it comes it, it will goes under failure so that should be indicated in the collision part then energy efficiency analysis then structural analysis this should be uh, so analysis can be done in the bim so normally they will called as uh, 5d model the bim methods called because we can analyze we can scheduling we can procurement then uh, we can accounting that is uh, how much budget then fabrication this all the work should be done in the bim that is the 5d model okay here some of the softwares there is a open softwares okay taiga true plan zoho gan projects orange scrum britex marshi so these are the some of the project managements open source are found on your network so we have just came across the time and also cost the last topic for you is uh, oh, what i say this quality okay the quality should always comes under the feasibility okay so look at this picture okay this is the first picture to just view this picture okay so i am going for the next picture if you have found any you are finding only one wolf on this picture okay that is the fox on this picture okay next thing we are always uh, many of them are focusing only the fox okay see the next picture okay you are finding another uh, big there is a large size of fox just behind the fox so that is the feasibility study okay feasibility study is nothing but viability of idea okay va because uh, if you are going to promote a product for example the feasibility study you can take a geo sim okay so many sims are there that is uh, airtel yasl then bsnl vodafone so many sims are there okay first the geo sim what they plan is they can go for the feasibility study okay many sims are the airtel is the number one okay so if you want to promote our product means what can we do so first we will reduce the uh, price price amount then we will increase the net capacity that is the speed of the net they done that okay after done automatically that product now now it comes under category 1 yatel comes under category 2 after seeing this uh, variation immediately yatel uh, decide to reduce the plan uh, that is the rate of the plan so that is the feasibility you have many problems in and around the project we should not focus on only one thing okay we should we should have ready to focus any problem and we want to answer for that that is the feasibility if you are successful in the feasibility study your product should be or your project should be in the inclined path okay what are the benefits you are uh, by while studying this feasibility means first we have additional support for our business okay while studying we have get a clear idea okay whether our product should uh, have very good market or our product should be very worth in this market whether we will be demand uh, demand status we have demand status in future so whether we can satisfy the customer needs so, okay so these questions will automatically increase the development of our business okay so this is the benefit of feasibility analysis so when we are to conduct this feasibility study okay first one by initiating process so what i say already initiating means you want to think early early while starting the business really in thinking of new business that is a initiating process so that is the best time for your feasibility analysis so what are the components in the feasibility means product feasibility i already said that geo sims atels and so the product geo sim is a feasibility study okay that should be next is market feasibility when you implement this product in the market okay so this should be successful or not then organization feasibility the organization should be 
in a correct manner okay if you are telling one rate today then uh, the organization the same organization should increase after uh, two days means they no one can get the profit so organization should be steady and also the financial status okay if these four things are good in the market you can go for a business plan otherwise if any one fails you can drop this drop to start the business okay so this is the feasibility study while while studying the feasibility study we can understand uh, our product should be demand in the society or not okay so from that we can understand whether we will proceed the pro business or we will drop the business and then the last topic is commissioning uh, commissioning nothing but is a order it is main is mainly preferred for a quality assurance process we already say that time cost and quality so here the quality assurance process mainly the commission is based on quality assurance process okay once the quality is good automatically you can satisfy the owner's requirement okay it is not a task okay like, like a project it is a not a task okay but it is a quality oriented program or a performance okay so that is the main concept of commission commission is nothing but it's a quality oriented performance okay next what is the main objective why are doing this quality process you want to first satisfy the owner's requirement okay once you satisfy the owner's requirement your product will be successful in the market okay second one to review the lesson from the previous project okay uh, the customer says okay we are satisfied 98 percentage and 2 percentage we are not satisfied uh, because uh, while going uh, for example we are taking a geo sim you are while going to the any villages uh, the network facility is not available as like now so that 2 percentage should be uh, review and rectify okay so next one is budget then uh, last one should be a owner acceptance okay Uh, next one is design design in pre design team who are on the team first one is cxa cxa means is a commissioning administrator and the commissioner administrator should be the head of the team then owners consultant then design that is a design team on the contractors okay this is a group task so i have show some uh, flow charts here okay there should be two process one process should be the building development process uh, then uh, second one is uh, commissioning process so this commissioning pro process is directly looks of the building development process in each uh, stages okay in every stages every stage he should satisfies the owners okay okay what what are the what are the things they will uh, main objective is first uh, first they want to verify the de uh, design for example uh, being a design engineer um i am going to design a house okay uh, for a for slab for beam i am giving a design so that design should be approved by the commission team okay that after that only i will execute the work okay this this design should be not only approved by the commission team is also approved by the Uh, concern owner so that should be verified by the design uh, the design team then that should be reported by the document so every activity we are going to check test okay or we are going to uh, we are going for laying of concrete means first we want to do the test procedure okay initial test we want to do that after satisfying the initial test then we want to move to the uh, large mass of the congress so the check uh, for every stages that should be a checklist okay so this is the checklist okay and uh, the, the commissioning team come and verify whether your project should uh, should uh, reach their uh, design aspects or any other divisions are there in the project okay so every stages they come and verify you and finally they will give the quality assurance so this is the uh, this is the last format for your project management so uh, your project management should based on mainly the three concepts that's time cost and the quality okay time means it's a project management planning technique it comes under the gantt chart that and all or uh, then cost means uh, cost budgeting then uh, yearly money values and then finally is quality quality should comes about the feasibility study and also the uh, commissioning methods okay if you have any doubts you can ask me Do you have any clarifications?
or i i cannot i thought i will cannot i can't fulfill your uh, full thoughts but i partially i have satisfied uh, the overview of the project management sir um, <clears throat> morgan sir yes sir sir uh, uh, there is one uh, one question question for you sir from the okay. student side professor okay, so they are asking what is the scope of project management in india Yes, uh, and uh, especially in south india i mean they are they especially in south india what is the scope of the project okay so the main the main scope of our project management in our south india is the mainly time and the cost okay so day by day for example we are purchasing uh, a cement uh, for this month at a rate of 550 per bag means if you going delaying the project after 3 months as our uh, estimated time of our project is just 3 months okay so up to 3 months we will uh, purchase rupees 550 and we will we will we will inform to the owner also sir we are purchasing the amount of 550 rupees after 3 months immediately any by political reason or by some demands okay the cost will be increases to nearly 600 if one bag is increases 50 rupees means automatically we need a nearly 200 bags for a concrete means automatically 10000 rupees increases okay when we are going to inform to the owners sir uh, 10000 rupees is increases means he can't accept it okay so that we are lacking in the project management okay so uh, forthcoming engineers should concentrate on the project management so the project man- management will help us both in time wise and also in the cost wise okay sir uh, thank you for your answer uh, okay. students if, students feel feel free to uh, ask your doubts if you have any doubts please uh, unmute yourself and you can uh, ask and clarify your doubts um sir uh, <clears throat> i have, i have a small uh, practical question in re- in uh, <clears throat> real time project sir okay sir okay sir uh, yeah so basically so in uh, it turnkey projects are like so like um, that where they used to do the scc and all so <laughs> what usually i i felt as architect i mean uh, the role of the role of role of project management in assessing the information also from the mm-hmm. from the architect who is in charge and okay. um, and and who is the and, and the project manager who is in charge so who is who plays the major role sir i mean in terms of all estimation handling and um, i mean who is the prime in charge for the execution at site so the execution of site is uh, should be depends on both of them only sir because by uh, both the architect and the engineer should combine and if you perform the task means we will completely in a, in a as per the specified time okay but uh, it's not possible nowadays because when our architect giving uh, some ideas some engineers should not accept that so some of the conflicts are in between them okay but uh, while we are going to take uh, each while we are seeing at site means uh, it should be totally the work should be undergone by the engineers okay sir so even the architect scheduling the task but it should be completed successfully by the engineers because they are spending more time uh, at the site when compared to the architects right. as this is my view sir okay because i have done practically nearly 10 years uh, uh, i also be a consultant structural consultants okay there while i giving some schedule to the engineers i say if you want to complete the work within uh, one week he will do 10 days why i am going to argue why i ask, i asked to complete the work to within one week or you know, just yesterday to uh, two or more three he says no sir the labs are not coming okay so that all the things should be organized coordinated by the engineers and he is the main responsible to complete the work in within a specified task sir. this okay, is my sir. view sir uh, yeah mm-hmm. actually i understand your your um, you view towards towards my question but okay. um, uh, my clarification is like is it, is it same for uh, it sector and as well as the uh, normal normal real estate real estate sector, sector. i mean uh, what i prefer from from my point of view is like what you answered is it's kind is somewhat kind of um, uh, oriented toward, towards the uh, the current real estate real estate se- sector i'm okay, asking sir. like is it same for it sector also this uh, it sector is totally varies uh, it sector is full and fully uh, based on the ever uh, Uh, project software management in the project software management architect should play a major role okay because every scheduling uh, time should be uh, entered and it should be stored by a data totally completed by the architect only in the it field 
So totally architect will be the main domain part. He is to be the leading part sir. When compared to engineers, because the engineers should not have a more knowledge on the uh, software, like primary or not. They have no knowledge about that. So in that aspect, the architect plays a major role, sir. Okay, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Sir, we have we have one more one more question for for you from okay. students uh, side. They are asking which which software will you prefer for project management. So project management, if you are going for a, a small project, you first of all you, uh, you you should thoroughly learn about the MS Excel. So MS Excel have lot of opportunities, but we are we are not replacing in a proper manner. Okay. Now first of all, we want to go for a MS Excel. If you are going for a higher, uh, that is largest building, then go for the Prime Vera. Okay. So every uh, architect or construction management student should know about Prime Vera. If you are going for any Uh, companies, they first they are asking uh, which software you will know. Okay, they are preferring for Prime Vera because in leading construction they are asking uh, if you know Prime Vera, we will immediately appoint you. So better you can uh, learn Prime Vera for employment job and also it is uh, now it is a uh, competitive. Well, you should know Prime Vera. Otherwise, it's a little difficult to survive. Okay, <clears throat> okay, sir. Thank you for your answer, sir. We have we have one last question for you. Like, I mean, from from student side actually. so they are they are asking like um, uh, how how we know uh, how we we know about the time period of one work then so the, if the if the work is a project is assigned and how to how that the time management is managed in at site yes sir it should be done by practically for example we are constructing a, a brick work for uh, brick work uh, nearly 3 feet only one per, per day we want to construct only 3 feet Okay, for for nearly uh, for uh, the length should be twenty feet. This is the standard value. Okay, so uh, if you want to build a wall for a uh, for for a ground floor means it means nearly comes about nine feet. So we just know that okay, three days needed to complete the task. So for a for example, we are going for constructing a slab. We need a fourteen days. Okay, so everything they have a time schedule. So by adding the time schedule time, then only. Uh, we will know the duration of uh, we, we are telling that uh, we will complete the work within uh, three months how we are telling means uh, for foundation it uh, nearly takes for 10 days uh, then filling of the foundation then again 10 days then we are constructing the brick work so i already say that the brick work uh, up to 7 feet uh, it will take so five days then lintel beam it will takes two days then again brick work then again slab when we are going for the slab we are just uh, leave it after laying we are leaving 21 days so Here to one month, here one month, nearly two months are fulfilled. So within this two months, uh, I am going to start a grill work for the windows. Okay, so after two months, I am just uh, fixing the uh, windows doors and all. Again, we are extending one month. That one month is for electric and uh, white washing. So this way, this method, I have calculated. So the one week or oh, the work for ground floor should be completed within three months. So this is the. a uh, time schedule we want to calculate so as a by practically we will know that okay uh, <clears throat> thank you for your answer sir thank you and and, and um, uh, students if you have any questions please unmute yourselves and uh, um, you can ask your you can ask questions kartikeyan sir do you have any question uh, from your side uh, no sir sir actually first of all very uh, thank you very much for uh, accepting our invite and uh, come for this session well prepared sir so it is uh, very related to the syllabus so thanks for your time for uh, spending your valuable time uh, okay sir kartik sir did you remember me actually i yes, had sir, famous yes, sir, uh, you came as an uh, aur for uh, an yeah, yes sir yes sir one time i came for the aur yes, and uh, sir we have, have we have spent uh, more time on uh, for yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so nice to meet you again, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Feeling pleased, pleased to meet you, sir. Okay, sir. So okay, it's sir. Uh, thank, thank you for your presentation, sir. It's uh, very much related to our syllabus, sir. So thank you for the valuable you. time for uh, uh, preparing that uh, that valuable uh, valuable information uh, that thank relates you, to our syllabus, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, I have yeah. sent this uh, presentation to Bala, sir, sir. If you any students, yes, sir, yes, sir. I mean, so just to share to each sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, sir. Students, uh, if you have any any other questions, I uh, can uh, ask, sir. 
uh, yes uh, thank you sir and if there are any sir. questions uh, uh, please ask uh, else we can end the session sir okay sir we can end the session uh, kirtana good evening sir uh, good evening ma'am uh, good evening uh, like i would like to take this opportunity to thank professor murugesh sir for accepting our invite amit has busy schedule and providing us with a seminar on overview of construction and project management starting from the five elements of project management to the framing of objectives the session was completely informative sir we once again like to thank you for making the seminar a great success and we also look forward for your continued support sir thank you thank sir you, thank you thank you Okay. <clears throat> okay, Murugesh sir. Thank you so okay, much, sir. sir. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, students. Thank you, faculties.